It's uh, good to have everyone here today. Uh, we are continuing in the sermon version of the Ram series. And let me tell you what that means. We're doing a series in our classes and in our small groups uh, about the relationship uh, attachment model, which has to do, again, with individual, usually individual couples kinds of relationships. But the principles that this the RAM is built on are also principles that I believe speak to us as the body of Christ. They speak to us in terms of uh, how we relate e to each other. And so, uh, for instance, uh, as the church, as members of the body of Christ, it's important that we know each other. It's important that we trust each other. It's important that we are reliable and others can rely on us. And today we're going to talk about uh, the importance of commitment. You know, uh, there was a street I used to drive down <clears throat> taking my grandson to middle school. That was several years ago. He's a graduating senior in high school this year. And there was a big billboard. It was a marine billboard, and it said, we don't take applications, just commitments. We don't take applications, just commitments. And, and uh, as we're thinking about commitment, I want to think about that, that deeper level of relationship where you are committed uh, to, some, to someone else. Uh, and I, I don't know, you've heard this story before about breakfast, bacon and eggs, and commitment, you know? The uh, chicken is involved in breakfast that's bacon and eggs, but the pig is committed all the way. Exactly, exactly. Well, in my, uh, one of my prof professions, I guess, when I was a football coach, there's different eras of sports uh, I can remember where there was no such thing as the three-point line in basketball, you know? Uh, Landon doesn't even, hasn't even heard of that. What? No three-point line. But, but there was a time in coaching football where it was a lot easier. It didn't always happen with all the players, but it was a lot easier for them to be committed to their team. Nowadays, there's this thing called the portal. And just because... You're with us today, Landon. Go ahead and give us a really brief explanation of what the the portal is in college football. What? Yeah, switch teams. You know that? When I was playing in the 19 none of your business, uh, it, it never that never happened ever ever. But now, hey, I'm this team one year, I'm with this team a different year, whatever. Uh, commitment. But even back in the day when I played and coached, there were often players that were on the team, they stayed on the team their whole career, but they still weren't committed to the team. They were rather mostly committed to themselves. They were in it for me. Commitment to a team. Commitment to breakfast. <laughs> Commitment to the Marines is different than just showing up and participating. It's a beyond that. And I think we'll get to that as we get to the end of the, the sermon. But what we're asking us to look at today is our commitment to each other as the body of Christ. And as we begin that, uh, I'd like for us to pray. God bless us today with your truth and your wisdom that we could hear from your Holy Spirit and that uh, upon hearing we would act, we would, we would do what you've shown us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. So, 
We're going to talk about this section of Ephesians 5 for just a minute. And this section begins, first of all, background. Uh, God, chapter 1, before creation of time, He loved us. He sent Jesus for us before we even knew about Him. In, in, in chapter 2, it talks about how we were dead, but then we were made alive. In chapter 3 and 4, it begins to talk about how we are members of one body. Come back to that in a minute. Members of just one body, the church. And then it goes to this section that begins, submit yourselves one to one another out of reverence for Christ. Now, in some Bibles, the next sec, the next verse, well, let's just see how it is in mine because I haven't actually looked. You know, you got several Bibles and when I'm preparing out of several, you know, they're all old and they all got lots of writing. And this one says, starting in verse 22 of chapter 5, the heading above it is instruction for Christian households. And you know, it kind of is that. It kind of is that. But for real, you know, in the way that Paul wrote it, in Greek, no verses, no chapters, just a letter. The letter version didn't have that instruction for Christian households, even though that is involved in the next few verses. Because the next few verses, so well, before we get to that, I just want to get to this submit thing, this, this idea in chap, in verse 21. Submit yourselves out of reverence. This is what I mean by, what I think Paul means by putting The others' people's needs before our own. I'm going to submit to them. I'm going to put their needs ahead of mine. It doesn't mean I'm going to bow the knee knee every time I walk into the house and Mary Beth is sitting on the sofa that I'm going to fall at her feet and just, you know, start doing this. Not necessarily. But I'm going to put her needs ahead, ahead of mine. And then Paul... Now remember, up to this verse, he's talking about the church and how we ought to live among each other. Then he uses this as an example of what the church is. He's not using the church as an example of how husbands should treat wives. He's using husbands and wives how the church should be. So he says in the next few verses, it says that wives should submit to their husbands. It says that husbands should love their wives like Christ loved the church and gave His life for the church. Yeah, y'all know that. Some of you have heard this part preached before. I can look around the room and know that you've heard a dozen sermons on this for sure. All you Church of Christ folk and ex-Baptists or whatever you were. I don't know what we are now. We're just weird. Christ Community Church. Amen. It's us. Well, so... Paul then gets to this and he ends. And as a matter of fact, uh, our leader in the Ram series ended with in the middle of a sentence, which kind of bothers me when you're thinking about context and scripture. Uh, I want to say that it's really important to put scripture verses, especially in the context of their bigger picture. What's in chapter three? What's in chapter six? I want to know those things as I read chapters four and five. Does that make sense? Context. So the context is, well, he ended with this. He ended his reading about the wives and husbands and said his end was in the middle of a sentence, actually, that said, this is a profound mystery, which I would agree. It is a profound mystery when wives submit to husbands and especially when husbands love their wives like Christ loved the church. That, that, that is a mystery. But if Paul goes on to say this. It's a profound mystery. And then he clarifies, but I'm talking about Christ and the church. This is the kind of commitment that the church, raise your hand, church. If you're part of the church, raise your hand. You know what just bothers the you know, this is kind of on a rabbit trail here, sorry. Uh, but when someone says they love Jesus, but they don't, you know, do the church, uh, it doesn't make sense. The, the body of Christ is the church. So so the, the thing is, I am talking about this submission to each other. 
that I submit myself to Betty. I submit myself to Bradley. I love Joe like Christ loved the church and gave his life for the church. This is what this Ephesians 5 scripture is talking is this kind of what I'm going to call pig commitment. Y'all with me on the pig commitment? This is what this is what it is to be a follower of Christ. You can't be a follower of Christ without being part of the body of Christ. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's real. When you become a follower of Jesus, you become a member of the body of Christ. You don't have a choice to not be a member of the body of Christ. That's what it is to be a follower of Jesus. When you commit to Jesus, when you commit pig style, when you commit to Jesus, you are committing to each other. Look around next to you. Look at the person next to you. Go ahead, Betty, you and Jenny. Yeah. You're committed to each other like Christ was committed to us. That means we're going to give our lives to each other. We don't have any kind of, there's no kind of, boy, I can't say that, halfway doing this. <laughs> you're in or you're out. You can't say, I love Jesus, but I don't get, I'm not with the church. That's, that's the body of Christ. So in our video, in our lesson from Ram, uh, we talked about this as part of commitment, what commitment means, the idea of perseverance and presence. And I want to talk about those uh, perseverance and presence in the context, again, of the church. And I, I want to think about both of these terms when I think of commitment. One of the things I think of when I think of CCC and commitment, it is the praise team. It is the praise team. When I think about perfection, perseverance and presence, I think of the praise team. In many ways, I think many ways, God uses the praise team as the glue that holds CC together. The planning, the practicing. You know, you just can't walk back there. I can't just walk back there and start playing the drums like Lucas. I wish I could of anything. I wish I could just bang those drums, especially when he starts bobbing his head up and down, his hair starts flying around. He does that, but that doesn't just come just because you have two hands and can bang bang a drum. I love it when I, I come in early and I hear them talking and, and Steve would be asking a question. Now, how did that, how did that chord fit into that? I don't know what even they're talking about, you know. They're talking about G's and Bs and you know flats and stuff. I don't. Know. You must have a, have to have a college education and beyond to, to be able to understand what they're talking about. But it's because they practice. It's because they're committed. And, and you know, there's a certain time too. You know, a lot of us, including myself, sometimes we can kind of come when we want. You know, not the praise team. Boom, kickoff time. It's like the football team. Kickoff time, uh huh. Got to show you're there, and you finish, and you clean up, and you take care of your stuff. You practice your instruments at home. I mean, that's commitment. They're showed up. They're the pig, in a good way. In a good way. That's the praise team. So they're committed. But I want to talk about these two words: perseverance and presence. First of all. Again, the Ram series pointed to these two factors in perseverance is forgiving and rebuilding trust, which are super important. And we've done a lot of teaching about forgiveness and rebuilding trust and man reconciliation. There is that is a that's the foundation of who we are. But perseverance is more than that. 
And I want to say it is faith or it's holding on. It's faith in times of trouble. When trouble comes, we persevere. And we have a lot of troubles that hit us as a body of Christ and as individuals. This is what I could get out Steve's prayer list in class today. Man, we are persevering through times of trouble, both so many kinds. One is family troubles. Do you have family troubles? Does anybody in the room have family troubles? And what do we want to do? There's a part, there's a part of me that wants to just say, I'm done. Out of here. But perseverance won't let me let go. And we're in it together in health troubles. Persevering through health troubles saying, I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to give it up. I'm not going to give up praying for you in your own health troubles. We have financial problems. Sometimes financial troubles will be, can cause the end of relationships. But sometimes it, or the better choice and what commitment is, is persevering through these tough times. And one of the main ways that perseverance and presence connect, one of the best things you can do with a person who's sitting around you, who's a member of your own body, the body of Christ, who has a pig commitment just like you do, is to say to them and mean it, I'm with you. I'm not a doctor. I can't heal you. I'm not a rich man. I can't solve all your problems by a donation. But I'm with you. My heart is with you, even when I don't see you. Today, my heart is with people who aren't sitting in this room. Today, I've thought several times over and over about Michael Rhodes. I thought and prayed for Pam. Even though they're not here, I'm with them. I'm with them and others. I'm, I'm with them, my presence is with them. And so I want to talk about this idea of presence. And I love the term, the way the Ram uh, series put it, it's to carry each other in our hearts. Here's what happened to me a couple of uh, days ago, maybe a couple of weeks. But uh, we're cleaning out my mom and dad's house. And they have a lot of stuff. Mary Beth told me a couple of uh, days ago, maybe a week or so, that uh, she was not aware of something about me when she married me. And I said, well, I, you know, it was pretty obvious I was bald, you know, I didn't lie about my age. She said, I didn't know you were a pack rat. Really? I did. I didn't either. <laughs> but so now it's been revealed to me. But uh, my parents are to the next level of pack rat. And so we're cleaning out stuff and we're in a room with a box and she finds in there a picture of me in 1993 standing on the sidelines with my coaching gear on, my headphones on, an expression on my face, looking out, action shot all the way. And she takes this picture and brings it home and sets it on the counter by her bed. Yeah, man. You know what that is? Presence. She sees the picture. She thinks of me. I see her see the picture and know she's thinking of me. And because she's also made some complimentary comments about the picture. Of course, I was 40 years old then. There was compliments to be given. But she's carrying me in her heart even when I'm not around. Do you carry someone in your heart? Can you have, can you be in the presence of someone without being able to touch them? Yeah. You carry them in, in, in your heart. And one of the ways I want to suggest that we do this is we also communicate with each other in ways when we don't see each other. There's several people in here. I love, one of the things I love about the praise team also is they uh, text each other, these little group texts. And I'm not part of the praise team, but I'm in on the 
on the uh, text message. And one of the things I, I kind of want to take a bets on even uh, is who is going to te text the rest of them first that they're going to be late. <laughs> is it going to be Jeanette or Shelby? I don't know. One of them is like, who is going to do that? And I'm, I'm just looking at the, net, at the text. Uh, Jeanette sings out a question, are we all going to be able to make it? And people start saying yes, 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 no, and I'm out this week or whatever. And then there'll be the text they'll from Jeanette usually, or sometimes Shelby, you know, I'm running late. Uh, but I love how that communication happens even when you're not in your physical presence. And so I, I forgot something at the beginning of the sermon because that's the way I roll. And I need for you to give me, I need people to raise your hand, I'll point to you, and you're going to tell me, first of all, I need one person to tell me a number between, I'm going to say, one and 360. One in 360. Somebody raise, raise your hand. Tell me a number. Steve? 359, Sally. 359. Now I want you to give me a number between 361 and 629. 629, got to be under that, and 361. Don't If you say 361, I'm not going to tell you. Okay, what is it? No, no, no. I, uh, behind you is Leanne. Sorry, you didn't see her, but she was first. Okay, let me let me let me talk to you one more time. <laughs> the high level is six hundred and twenty-nine. <laughs> I love you, Leanne. <laughs> Give me some more. Somebody. Four twenty-five. Okay. Have you ever known someone who was committed to being in your presence? Now that's kind of creepy sounding on one hand. Committed to being in your presence. So my grandfather, my mom's dad, uh, was a medical officer in World War II. He was stationed in the Pacific uh, Ocean where his primary job was dealing with malaria, which killed more soldiers than gun bullets. But he also took care of the wounded. He was on several different islands primarily. Uh, just, he can pick it up. He's a big boy. Uh, primarily uh, Manila. And he wrote my grandmother. And it was difficult in 1943, 44, 45, to always, to always uh, have the mail delivered on time. So here we go, 329. Uh, anybody who's read any of these letters know that if you've read three of them, you've pretty much read them all. But he starts like this, Sarah, my sweetheart, we're talking about presence. How do you... How do, you improve, how do you make decisions that help you become more committed to each other? That's, that's a question. How can I be more committed to Leanne? How can I become more committed to Steve? Well, part of it is how to enhance my presence, our presence, even when we're not in the same room. And that my grandfather was going to, do it as in the separation during war with by writing letters. So he says, Sarah, my sweetheart, we'll get a few lines written to you before supper as this picture show last night that I will have, will have me fixed up so I can hit the hay as soon as the show is over. However, there is exactly no news for me to write to you because this has been a very boring day. This has been another one of those long and lonesome Sundays that seem to never come to an end. 
I spent the entire day around my hut alternating reading and sleeping, and I've been reading uh, Microbe Hunters, whatever that is, by uh, Paul DeCreef, and it's very interesting in spite of the pitifulness of some of his uh, popular magazine articles, uh, whatever that is. Uh, this book is a narrative of history of the early scientists' search for the course cause of disease, and it's very interestingly done. Now, you're thinking of a, a woman who's living in San Saba, Texas, communicating to a man who's on Manila during World War II, and he's just, she's just, he's just telling her what's going on. Even though this is Sunday, I'd hope to get some mail today, but there was such not to be my luck. Now, every day, every, almost every letter, he either is celebrating he got some letters or he is whining like a baby that he didn't. I don't know why I was even hopeful on Sunday because it's always a poor mail day. Surely this week I'll begin getting some of your letters direct so I can get some more recent news of you. I mail Patsy, that's my mom, a little birthday present today uh, that I made in spare hours gathered here and there. Hope she'll like it okay. Sweetheart, this is the, this is the ending paragraph of almost all the letters. Sweetheart, I love you so dearly and miss you more than it's possible for anyone to realize. You are my all and I long for you each waking minute. This separation from you is being, is being the bitterest thing I've ever had to take in my life. And I exist from day to day for that wonderful day when we can be together again. All my love is yours alone, always in, and in all ways, just your own Fred. Now, the letters are not remarkable themselves. He asked questions about how's it going, how are the San Saba armadillos doing in football. He asked questions about his son who's always in trouble, my uncle, and my mom who's always on the honor roll. You know, that's the way he goes. He asks questions. She gives, obviously, he's responding some of the letters she sent him. But the remarkable thing about this is, <clears throat> this box has 723 letters. One every day. Every day. Commitment. What is it to be committed, committed to each other in a way where you communicate both perseverance, I'm in it with you. Whatever you're going through, I'm going to go through it with you. I can't feel the physical pain of your pain. I can't always uh, fix your Financial problems, I certainly can't, uh, you know, necessarily wave a, wave, a, wave a wand over some of your relationship issues. But my heart, my care, my compassion, I want you to know it. I don't, I want you to know it. One of the things that happened as when mom passed away was there were several men, there were several men, they come up to dad and say, hey, I'm going to be with you. You're not going to be alone. And uh, I'll be calling on you soon. Well, it's been several weeks and I have a list at home because I'm that kind of sorry bum kind of guy. I have a list and on the list, there's a list that's, lay, that's titled Men Who Stepped Up and another list, list No Shows. Showing up. Being committed in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, let your yes be yes, let your no be yo. No. Are you in it with Jesus? Yes. If you say yes, that means we're, you're in it with all of us. We're committed. We're committed. We're pigs. That's who we are. So we make choices. And some of the choices we make is about how we choose to value 
the things in our lives. And, and the value I choose to put on you has to do with perseverance and presence. How important are you to me? Let me tell you how you are so important to me. I value being here one of the top things in my life. Now, I have other also things I value. Uh, my, my biological family, I value most of them. And, but, but I also, there's other people that I love and I value. But you know what I'm going to do on Sundays? I'm going to set my alarm for 5 o'clock. I'm just get up. I'm gonna get ready. I'm kind of drink some coffee, eat some oatmeal squares, drink some more coffee, get in the car with Mary Beth, and come here. You know why? I'm committed to you. I love you. I value being here with you. It's one of the top things on my priority list. I love you. And even when I'm not, even when I'm not, I think of you, I pray for you. And you know what? I know you're praying for me. I know without a shadow of a doubt that when Danny and Art say they're going to pray, they are not on going to be on the no-show list. They're going to be on the step-up list. Because their yes is yes and their no is no. And they're committed to being my brother. I know what they're going to do. Because they're committed. And this is what commitment is. It's putting these people we value above everything else. It's above our opinion. Do I always like everything that people say? No. Nope. It's above my feelings. It's above my disagreements. It's not about me. It's always about us. Sometimes I set those things aside. Sometimes I bring them up because you know what? Sometimes you need to hear a different opinion than yours. And, and we talk about it as brothers and sisters who are committed to the relationship more than we are committed to our opinion. Does that make sense? I'm more committed to the relationship than I am to my opinion, even though we're going to have a discussion about it. And I'm going to love you, even though you're usually wrong. And I trust you'll do the same. This gold standard, the epitome, the top of the top regarding commitment is Jesus he was committed to the cross. He said, I love you. I want you to be with me. And I'll do whatever it takes to make that happen. And so he went to the cross. Man, I love this song. And you know, I know how to get a song played by our praise band. It's, I'll tell Betty to tell them to sing it. And now that's going to happen. But the song, I Speak Jesus. Uh, when I'm singing that this time, I want to think about this idea of commitment and how He was committed to me. And when I speak Jesus, I am speaking this word, this word of I am committed to Him and the mission He gave me, which is to make disciples. It's the ministry of reconciliation. This is what it is. I'm committed to Him. I'm speaking Jesus and it's in His power and His example of commitment that I lay down my life like He laid down His. So we're going to sing and then I'll have a closing thought. Have a seat for one quick word. This is a reminder, something most of you know. One of our problems is what we call sometimes, inappropriately, we call it overcommitment. But really, it's undercommitment and overinvolvement. You understand what I mean? We say yes to too many things, and that chips away. It chips away at the things that matter the most to us.
What matters the most to me is loving Jesus with all my heart. I speak Jesus. And what Jesus has told me to do is to love my wife like He loved all of us. And He's told me to feed His sheep. These are the things He, he has not told me to memorize all the Yankees box scores. So I've stopped memorizing. I just read them now daily, but I don't you know, hey, seriously. If my Yankees addiction is biting into my time with God, I need to think about it. Am I a am I a pig or am I a chicken? Am I just involved in the body of Christ or am I committed to the body of Christ? That'll that'll work itself out for our life. It, it, choice by choice by choice. What I love about you is, I think it's this, one for all, this is almost the title of this sermon, one for all, all for one. We're for Jesus, we're for each other. Love you. See you next week and we'll talk about the holy kiss.